So uh, over to you, Dave, uh, for the reading of Luke chapter 2. OK, thank you. It's my privilege. Uh, Luke 22, Luke 2, 22 to 35. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who is righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul. Thank you. Thank you. God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father, it says here that uh, it is the Holy Spirit who revealed things to Simeon, and it is the Holy Spirit who was working in Simeon's life. And it is the Holy Spirit who moved him to the temple uh, to meet Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. So, Father, we also now pray that your Holy Spirit will reveal things to us just as he revealed things to Simeon. And Simeon talks about the light of revelation uh, for the nations of the world. And, and we pray that uh, your light now will be shined on us um, as we uh, hear these words that you have in store for us. Um, words of my mouth and the meditation of our, our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. And the people said, Amen. Uh, on Christmas Day, because of the lockdown, it was just Luke, Laurie, and me for a low-key Christmas dinner. Uh, we had arranged with Esther that she should not come down uh, as the whole of Ontario was going to be in a lockdown. Uh, we did not meet with most of, of our extended family this Christmas. Today, December 27th, is the last Sunday of Christmas. We have spent most of the year at home. For a lot of us, this is a year which we would like to forget. Uh, this has been a year like no other. Yet, in a few days, it will be 2021. 2020 has indeed been a long year. Mary and Joseph bring the baby Jesus into the Jerusalem temple. Uh, it is about 41 days after Jesus is born. Mary has been in a lockdown for 40 days due to ceremonial laws. Um, they bring the baby Jesus to present him to the Lord as the first born son after the 40 days in which Mary has been confined to being home. They offer a pair of doves and young pigeons as sacrifice for the ceremonial cleansing of Mary the mother as prescribed in Leviticus 12. Note that they do not offer a lamb. This means that they cannot offer a lamb. Um, they cannot afford a lamb. And so this shows us that Mary and Joseph belong to what we would call a working class family. Joseph is a mere carpenter. 
This also shows us that Mary and Joseph are devout Jews. They present their firstborn son at the temple in Jerusalem. They sacrifice two birds for the ceremonial cleansing of Mary. At the temple, they meet a righteous and devout man named Simeon. All his life, he has been waiting for the consolation of Israel. He has never seen a day in which Israel has not been under the rule of Romans. He longs for the vindication of Israel. However, here in this passage, we also see another emphasis of the Gospel of Luke. Luke introduces his readers to the work of the Holy Spirit uh, in the life of Simeon. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinitarian God. Luke tells us that Simeon waits for the consolation of Israel because the Holy Spirit is present in his life. The Holy Spirit has revealed to Simeon that he will not die until he has seen the Lord's Messiah. Luke 2, 26, the Holy Spirit moves Simeon to go to the temple that day. Luke 2, 27. So Simeon takes the baby Jesus in his arms and says these words, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Luke 2, 29 to 32. So Simeon says that he can now be dismissed in peace. He holds the baby Jesus in his hands and in his hands, he now beholds God salvation. This baby is the light of revelation to the nations. This baby is the glory of God's people, Israel. How can all of this be contained in a mere baby? And Mary and Joseph marvel at what Simeon says about their baby boy. How can this little child in their arms console Israel? Luke 2, 34 to 35, Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Luke 2, 34 to 35, Simeon tells Mary that Jesus will cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, he will also be a sign spoken against. He will reveal the thoughts of many. So Jesus not only comforts and consoles, as promised to Simeon, but Jesus also challenges and convicts. He causes the falling of right and rising of many in Israel. Many people will speak against him. And a sword will pierce Mary's soul too. What does Simeon mean by this statement? I believe that this is a prophecy that Mary will be present at the cross when her firstborn son, Jesus, dies there. And the cross will happen 35 years from now. We have been at home for 10 months because of the coronavirus. We will be in lockdown until January 23. Today is December 27. We all face this question. Is God in control? And in some ways, when we look back in 2020, we feel that we have lost 10 months of our lives being confined at home. So is God in control? Where is God? Is our cry. Yet there is one reality that the Christmas story confirms. God has entered the world and is involved with our lives. This God will experience the pain of what it means to be human. Mary will see her firstborn son experience this and a sword will pierce her own soul. Simeon's words assure Mary that God will be with her as she experiences the pain of losing her son. Uh, this sword of a loss of the, the loss of a loved one will pierce her own soul. God gives notice of this to Mary through the words of Simeon. God prepares Mary for this future day. God, Simeon's words to Mary also remind us that God is present with us as we go through this coronavirus 
crisis. God was there before the coronavirus. God is here as we go through this crisis. And God will be there when this crisis ends. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Simeon praised this as he has the baby Jesus in his arms. He is so aware that this baby that he has in front of him is the start of God's saving process for him, for Mary, Joseph, and for Israel. As we hear Simeon's words, we get a sense that Simeon has been reading Isaiah. This is what Isaiah predicts about Israel. Isaiah 49 verse 6. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. And as we read the Old Testament, Israel fails in this undertaking. Instead of taking God's plight to the people of the world, Israel cocoons itself. Then Israel is conquered, first by Babylon and then by Rome. Is there hope for Israel? How will this end? The key to this, according to Simeon, is this baby. This baby that Simeon holds in his arms. Somehow, Jesus will fulfill Israel's mission to the nations of the world. Somehow, Jesus will extend God's salvation beyond Israel to the people of the world. It is not evident to Israel, Mary, and Joseph right now, but God has given them a promise. And somehow, God's work starts now in terms of saving Israel and the people of the world. So Simeon happens to be in the temple when Mary and Joseph go there. Who or what moves Simeon to go to the temple to meet the baby Jesus? Luke 2, 25 to 27. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. Yes, it is the third person of the Trinitarian God who is at work in Simeon. The Holy Spirit is present in Simeon's life. The Holy Spirit reveals to Simeon that he will not die until he has seen the Lord's Messiah. The Holy Spirit moves Simeon into the temple that day to meet the baby Jesus. And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Luke 1 35 to 37. It is this same Holy Spirit. It is this same third person of the Trinitarian God. It is this same Holy Spirit who brings about the birth of Jesus in the womb of his mother, Mary. It is this same Holy Spirit who uh, is present in Simeon's life and brings him to the temple to meet Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. It is this same Holy Spirit who is God's personal presence in us as we go through this coronavirus crisis. We are human beings who are limited by time and space. 
Our understanding of reality is restricted to the matter of time and space. Today is December 27th. It will never come again. We are also limited by space. I am here in Mississauga, Canada. I am not in Malaysia with my Malaysian family and friends. When we celebrate Christmas, we are celebrating the God who stands beyond time and space, breaking into our human world. He comes as a baby lying in a manger in a stable. The aging Simeon says that he can now be dismissed in peace. He holds in his hands the God who has crossed the barriers of time and space to come to us as a human being. He is God incarnate. He is God made flesh, the Lord of eternity, now reveals himself as a human being bound by time and space. So the miracle of God becoming a human being can be explained in this way. God is like the author of a novel. Like all novels, there is a plot and there are characters. As part of this plot, the characters get lost and do not know where to go. The author gets so worked up about the plight of the characters in the novel, he wants to show the characters the way back to the right path and somehow, this author writes himself in as one of the characters into the novel. He becomes a character in the novel to show them the way back to the right path. And for him, it means suffering and dying on the cross. Simeon announces this to Mary, that this will happen and a sword will pierce your own soul too. The cradle, the wooden cradle of Christmas leads to the wooden cross of Good Friday. C.S. Lewis makes this quote. The son of man became a human being to enable man to become sons of God. The son of God becomes a human being to enable human beings to become children of God. This is probably why Simon can say that God can now dismiss him in peace. He holds the baby Jesus who represents salvation in his arms. God beyond time and space is that baby in his arms. And this eternal God has come to save us. God is the author of the story of our lives. God is not detached from our lives. God has become a character in the story of our lives. God becomes a human being, the Son of God, to save us, to make us children of God. So, we are not alone as we face the trials of life. We have a God who has become a human being. We have a God who is personally present in us through the third person of the Trinitarian God, through the Holy Spirit. So let the Holy Spirit move you to places where you can find Jesus. And when you find Jesus, stretch out your arms to him. Let's pray. So, dear Father, just thank you for looking after us. And thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be born in a manger, in a stable. Thank you that you became a human being and you experienced life like we experience. And thank you that you are still present with us because when Jesus went up to heaven, he sent forth the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is present in our lives right now and he's moving us. Um, and we pray, we pray that we will let the Holy Spirit move in our hearts and minds so that we will experience the grace of God in our lives. We ask all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the people said, Amen.